Hello and welcome to the Every Other Saturday podcast for a brand new episode this week where it looks like Rangers are about to make their second signing of the window and Mohamed Diomande from FC Northland. It's been one that's came out of the blue. Um, I think everybody just went to bed one night and woke up and well, were signing this guy. So it kind of just came out of nowhere. But um, yeah, we'll give our, our thoughts, opinions and um, he, he looks to be in the door pretty imminently. It could be as, as early as today, probably tomorrow. Um let me see him in the Rangers shirt, but all, all seems to be done. So if you do enjoy the podcast, you can like, subscribe and share. Um always very much appreciated and I so Mohamed Diomandi, um Philippe Clement backed pretty severely, you would think now with this this transfer. When it first broke, I'm thinking, right, the 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 club that he plays for have got a a track record of producing really good African talents that we've seen um really light up Europe in the past couple of couple of years. Mohamed Kudus probably been the the main standout of all of those um now at West Ham. Kamal Dean Sulemana as well. Obviously he was at Wren, Southampton. Um he he's came for there and made that the team a lot of money. And um Diomandi now f- to us it seems like quite a coup for for us to get a, a player of this kind of quality. You see these players kind of naturally going to like the Bundesliga and the French league and stuff. And I think it's a market we should be shot in. Uh, these are the kind of players that we should be scouting and, and getting in with the hopes of going selling them for twenty and above million pound, um making a lot of money to then keep recycling that and um that's that's what I like about the signing and obviously we 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 needed a midfielder. I think um we've been playing to John Sterling and midfield and it just shows you kind of how depleted we were in the area and we've obviously got a reinforcement. It's not a cheap one though, four and a half million um for this guy. So Philippe come on, he's been backed by the board we we have a proper um big big money signing. A uh, big money signing wasn't expecting us to spend that kind of that kind of money. Uh, this window, obviously, we were maybe thinking loans or what have you. But I mean, you've said the the two things I was really going to say. There, do you know what I mean? It's good to see obviously come on get backed. He's identified that we need obviously options in the middle of the park because it's so bare. And then obviously just touching on what you said obviously last week and also there as well, just to get any of these markets before other teams get any of them and obviously take these players on as you say, go to Ajax and then you go to West Ham. You go to you know what I mean? Kind of journey, obviously. Boy, you were on about there's been on, but I this I, I mean this came right out. The boy wasn't expecting us to sign this kind of player. Obviously, I don't really know much about him. Um, obviously we've been watching the YouTube highlights, but I tend to stay away from him now. Um, <laughs> just for obviously the <clears throat> last couple we've seen um with some of our signings, but I I'm looking forward to this one getting in the door. Obviously, storm whatever's stopping and flying over to getting the shot and all that part. So hopefully get this done. No, I, th- I think it'll be completed again as as possible, quickly as possible as we can do it really because Storms are holding up all of Scotland at the moment, which isn't ideal, <laughs> um, especially when he's having to fly for, for the USA as well for the training camp that they're on. So, aye, it's been, it's been a bit of a nightmare, but apparently he's done the medical and stuff. Everyone's pretty much sealed and um, aye. There's uh, Chris Jack speaking from the Rangers review about it. Four and a half million fee, long term contract, and it's to be completed soon, as all we kind of really know about it as of now. He stats this season, he's played 21 games. I think their season runs a bit weird, though. I think their season's actually finished now. He's not played since um, Norshaland actually beat Fenerbahce 6 1 in the Conference League, which is a, a huge result. Um, yep. And um, you can see by stats here, twenty-one games, five assists. He's not t- tend doesn't tend to be a goal scorer, um, of such. But he's quite a classy looking midfielder. I've seen a lot of people kind of make the comparison between Jory Bo, Glenn Kamara, something kind of that ilk that's got real class on the ball, but also a fighter in the middle of the pitch. And I think that was one of the key takeaways for for the last old firm game was how kind of weak we were in the midfield apart for, um. Do John Sterling's competitiveness in the middle of the park to really try and do something, but you could see we we're really lacking any control in the middle of the park in the game. So I think um, Diomandi will come in, and I think he'll be kind of ideal for the for the bigger sorts of games. It's obviously going to be a different experience for him playing in Norway, though. Um, what is it, Norway or Denmark? I think it's Denmark. Um, Denmark. How either way, the weather's going to be. Be the same where it is over there. I mean, here, so I don't think you'll have a problem with that. Uh, obviously, as I say, when I obviously just came out of the blue, 
Um, but it's good, as you say, get into these markets and, and get these kind of players, as you say, before they make the big jump. Usually, as you say, Bundesliga, maybe go to, as I say, an Ajax, a PSV, other kind of clubs as well. So I think, as we said last week as well, we need to start be looking at scouting these kind of players, bring them in, young, hungry players, and then obviously sell them on for a, a large fee. Um, and hopefully they have successful spells here, obviously before leaving. But I definitely getting a large fee for them after playing for us would would be massive for us, obviously. No, nah, because I think that that's the kind of club we have to really be now. We have to really properly model ourselves to be a club that's going to take on these young guys and maybe pay three, four, upwards of five million oh, well. for, for players that are obviously going to be good quality for what we need. But then obviously um, in long term make us a lot of profit as well. So I think that's where we need to be. It's a great start of life for um, Niels Coppin and, and identifying these guys and obviously trying new markets out and um, hopefully that stands us in good stead for what's to come under kind of his leadership with the transfers. Hopefully, mate, that's what you want to see. As I say, I'll be like, I was just scouting the Belgian league because obviously I feel like, right, maybe that's where we're going to go. What have you? But then I obviously didn't see this kind of one coming. But I, there's a lot of good, good young players out there that I feel like we should, we should have our eyes on. We should be looking to make moves for. You say it's a, it's a big fee, um, as well. You think about that as well. So. Hope the boy can deliver. Obviously, as you say, it's a, a positive, positive start for uh, the new man. But I, onwards yeah. and upwards, mate. I'm looking forward to seeing him in the shot, and hopefully that is pretty eminent. Come on, did obviously touch on his press, his press conference. Sorry, before the the Dumbarton game about not really having many sellable assets in in the club at the moment, and he's, he basically made the point himself. We need to be signing players that are young and trying to move them on for for the fee. That's the kind of club we need to try and be. So. Aye, I think everybody's aligned on that and it's glad to see hopefully we'll go in that direction. But Mohamed Diamandi, excited to see him in a Rangers shirt um, imminently. But obviously we did get back to competitive action the other day. Dumbarton, it was a miserable night. Um, obviously there was question marks if the game would actually go ahead due to pitch, pitch inspections and stuff like that. But it went ahead. Um, we got the job done. That was pretty much all you're looking for in a, in a, a tough kind of fixture mm. cup game Teams can be kind of just sitting back and hard to break down and the weather conditions didn't help either, but we got the job done. I mean, there was a couple of chances in the first sort of half an hour where you're like, how are we not scoring here? <laughs> maybe, I mean, sorry, no, maybe, maybe upwards of 10 chances. Um, <laughs> Serio Dessers <laughs> and uh, Todd Cantwell, Rabbi Matondo, McCausland, all their kind of front players failed to convert and that's been a, a big problem really all season is the, the, the chances that we don't take. No, the chances that we definitely don't take. But I think uh, one of the moments for me that was absolutely hilarious was watching the referee put Campbell on his his keister. Um, <laughs> that was to me that was quite hilarious. Obviously, the I mean some of the chances Dessers was missing. Up. I'm really uh, that that's that tells you haven't you need to do we know there now. I know I know we've all tried to get behind them obviously and what have you. But I think now you're looking at it, you're like right. Probably summer is definitely when he's got to go now. Um, can't see him to take them in this window, but uh, he's got to he's got to be wanting to move on there. Rabi played some. I thought Matondo, sorry, uh, Yelmaz played some lovely balls into him as well. Um, but obviously, as you say, weather conditions, part what have you, you can say what you want to do as long as we get the job done. That's the main thing, um, and get ourselves through. Um, but I, I couldn't imagine playing in that kind of game. By the way, honestly, that was horrendous conditions, man. Cameraman, nah, I mean, especially Jesus for the TV as well. The lens, Every five minutes, I'm thinking, come on, somebody wipe the lens for the cameraman there, do you know what I mean? Brutal. Um, but I mean, if there's only a real one sort of thing you can take away from it, I would probably say Lundstrom. Yeah, again, solid. Look, has to be signed on a new contract, obviously. You've seen Jack and that come on. Um, and then obviously we get the the stat and all that. Hey, Scott Wright making his 100th appearance for Rangers. Um, that was, I mean, how is he He made over 100 appearances for us? I, I'm, I'm baffled by that. Um, and then obviously him and McConsley linked up as well. So I, uh, overall, just good to get through, as we say, for the cup. Nah, good, good to get through. Obviously, as you say, Dessers, he missed a, a good few chances, but he eventually did get his goal, which I think is maybe the positive thing to take away from it, as he, he eventually did score. Um, Lundstrom, obviously, opening his account for the season as well. His first, um, first goal, head at the back post, was needed at that time. Thankfully, we got that goal. And then I second half really flat. To be honest, nothing happening until the penalty. Tavernier sticks it away. Barisic gets subbed on. We immediately lose a goal. <laughs> it's not even. A, it's not even a. It's not even a thing anymore that we're just forcing hate <laughs> onto Barisic. It's just so clear every time he steps on the pitch that there's a, a decline. And whoever we play, Dumbarton, they still cannot handle. Um, 
playing um, players of that quality. We lose a goal through that, and then obviously Scott Wright scores these, the exact same goal he scored for like the last two years <laughs> uh, to finish the game off 4-1. But aye, it, it, that was the team that obviously started the game. I think you'll probably be um, seeing that team play, obviously, out with Connor Goldson and McCrory. Uh, Goldson suspended, obviously, for the game against Hibs. McCrory will obviously step out and Butland will come back in, but I think that's largely the team we'll, we'll see moving forward anyway for the for them, the short term. Games obviously coming up against St Marnaby and um, Hibs, obviously, on Wednesday, so we're going to need every player to kind of really step up, and obviously the last time that we did play Hibs... Um, was was Philippe Clement's first game, uh, four nothing at home. It was a great start to life for him as a manager. I remember Cyril Dessels, Raskin, and I think Abdul Asima scored too. And I think we should obviously touch on Abdul Asima. It's been obviously, um, we've got the the depressing news that he's been injured in right. training. I think we'll hear in the press conference today. If you feel like come on the severity of the injury, it doesn't look good. It's going to be one that's going to be um kind of back in one or two weeks and maybe a month or two, which is really, really annoying because we've relied on him up, up front. Um, he's been the main man. And to lose him for a, for a significant period of time just isn't ideal at all. You can kind of just keep my fingers crossed to know that it's, it's okay and they can kind of maybe start wanting back to recovery um, sooner than we think. I mean, that's, uh, that's what you pray for there. Obviously, you're watching that game and then news comes through about him. Um and you're thinking right, it's just a luck in it really. Um, but I, I just I hope he gets back as soon as he, he possibly can. Um, and then also obviously the news as well. Obviously his agent was talking as well obviously about how much he's enjoying life up here. Um, I mean, got to get it done. I'm sorry, this is one for me, but it's it's got to be done. We've got to make sure this guy's a, a permanent Rangers player. Um, by the summer. Um, because he's he's been obviously one of the key men for us this season. But to lose him for the period we're going to lose him is. It's a bit of a blow, obviously, but you just hope he comes back as, as fast as he can. Nah, you just kind of need to hope and, and pray that he's going to be back pretty soon. It's been, it's not been ideal um, at all getting that news, but it's big opportunity now for Rabi Matondo to really get a run in the team, stake a claim. This is probably his chance now where we can see if he's going to be up to it as a Rangers player that we can rely on um, week upon week, and I hope so, because I think he showed good signs in the Dumbarton game, it's all about composure for Matondo. It's all about finding the back of the net more than he, he actually does. So um, that'll be interesting to see how he kind of gets on out there. But his, his pace is terrifying, obviously. Um, and against Hibs, obviously, <clears throat> Hibs away, they'll come at you. Um, at Easter Road, they'll, they'll try and make a game out of it. Obviously, they're sitting six at the moment. Their last games, if I just pull it up here... Obviously, you beat off Hart, St Johnston, Drew with Motherwell, and they just beat Forford in the Cup 1-0. So I think there's been a bit of a, a decline in terms of the, the play that they've had over the past couple of weeks. They went on a wee bit of a run with Nick Montgomery, but um, it's been a bit inconsistent. Um, they've obviously signed a couple of players of their own. Kind of surprised, actually, the, the quality mm -hmm. of the signings they've gotten. Um, Emiliano Marcondes from Bournemouth on loan um, Danish striker obviously he's played with Brentford and looking to kind of kickstart his career again and then um, Malida as well Hertha Berlin winger again two, two kind of interesting signings for them I watched Nick, Nick Montgomery speak earlier on um, Marcondes will be in the squad to, to face Rangers um, Malida I don't think will be but um, they've obviously got uh, Lewis Miller uh, Martin Boyle away with the Asia Cup um, with Australia as well so a couple of players missing and injured but it's always going to be a tough game when you go up to Easter Road regardless of kind of what, what's happening where they're sitting on the table they'll always kind of they'll be in your face for, for the get-go uh, they'll be up for it you know you always know that they're, they're up for this kind of game just key for us is also just to, to get a result <clears throat> get a three points um, but I, I mean they have made some some surprising signings. I mean, obviously the boy for Hertha as well. Um, I think that's a that's a decent sign for Hibs. Um, so getting some decent recruitment in. It's good to see. Obviously, I think it's just also good to see clubs uh, in the league as well sign kind of players like that as well. You know, I mean, the amount of times we hear people talk talk down about the league or what have you. So it's good to see players like that coming to the league. Obviously, play for Hibs, but I uh, it's good. I just think it's good um, all around. Obviously, for competition wise, but I. Uh, Hopefully, as I say, three points on the board. We know what kind of game it's going to be. Just need what, obviously, the weather. 
hopefully it doesn't cancel it. That's the, the major thing that I'll, I'm worrying about, really. But I hopefully the, the weather doesn't stop this game from happening. No, nah, of course. It's looking pretty dismal out there at the moment. But um, obviously, things can change um, in a day. Obviously, we've got time to prepare for this one. As I say, I think it will kind of be as you will, similar to the, the Dumbarton game. I think um, Balligan, I think, is free after his suspension. I think he served that after the uh, during the Kilmarnock oh. game, sorry, after the old firm. And um, I think he'll be back in contention for this one. We'll need him to be back in contention because Ben Davies is nowhere to be seen. Connor Goldson's injured. You don't want to be having to play Lundstrom at centre-half. Leon King throwing him into a game of this kind of magnitude away again. You don't really want to be doing that, so... I think um, certain certainly Balligan will start start this game and it's good to have an option like Nico Raskin back in the midfield. He's just such a quality, quality player. I'm glad that he's um, obviously got up to speed in the past couple of games he's played and looks to be obviously good to start games alongside John Lundstrom. Obviously, we got the news throughout the the break. I guess Kieran Dow is going to be out for a, a long time and Dujon Sterling's obviously injured at the moment again and it's just not ideal the amount of injuries we keep on picking up. Sifuentes, nobody really knows what's what's happening with him. Um, and then I obviously the attack. We've got Fabio Silva that can um, obviously play out wide or play um, behind Dessers. So there's options. Tom Lawrence as well. Sorry, I forgot about him. Um, we've definitely got options coming back in, but players continue to keep dropping out. No, nah, keep keep dropping. Out. I mean, you. I was going to say you're 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 all right to forget little Lawrence with singing because I mean. Where has he been most of the time? You know what I mean? Injured. Uh, I think Fabio's probably going to start this game. I think he's going to make his full full debut here. I mean, you you can't hang me for me after. I just come on, Dessers. You've you've got to start producing now for me. But I, I, I can't really see anything about that team part for Dessers that I would change really, mate. To be fair, as I say, main thing is just getting the three points. Obviously, hopefully the game doesn't get cancelled with the weather or what have you. But I, I just hope we can get a win here and obviously. Hopefully see the lad in the shirt soon as well. Um we sign him, get him over. Um so I hopefully onwards and up with that. And obviously Jack as well, back as well. We got a couple of these sort of players as we say that have been injured that are starting to make their way back. Um so I'm just just on for the free, mate. No. No, obviously we've got about a week left in the window as well. There's probably still a lot of work to be done. Red Van Yelmazi's future is still so uncertain that nobody really kind of has mm. an idea if he's yeah. going to come or go. We'll need to then get a full back in if he does go. I think with the amount of money that we're spending on Mohamed Diamandi, it kind of spells to me that there's going to be someone maybe going out for a fee. I don't know who that will be, obviously, but um, definitely I, I could see a couple of players going. I could see maybe one coming in um, alongside Diamandi. If we're kind of hopeful, um, I think that kind of rules out Lauren Shankland, to be honest, in this window with the, with the kind of fee that we've paid for Diamandi, with the kind of <laughs> the, the comments that Clement's made about wanting to bring in players yep. that will obviously build, build uh, profits in the years. But I, I personally think still, if you're, if you're going to sign a guy that's going to win you the league, I don't really... I don't care what age he is, to be honest. If he's going to score goals, that's kind of what I'm looking position. for. I think you can you can kind of take away the the profit thing. Obviously, if he's a good player in his prime at the moment, that's kind of the way I'm looking at it. No, I'm I'm totally on, on board with it. Obviously, man, just talking about young players buy and sell that kind of thing. But Shanklin, you sign Shanklin, I think you, 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 there's a chance you win the league. Do you know what I mean? You've got more than obviously a chance to win it. But it's just one for me. I mean, if we don't sign him this window, I, I just feel like now we're, we're probably not going to sign him at all. Really, no. I just that's the way I'm feeling now. I think if we don't get him in this window. I don't think we're going to sign him at all. I don't think we'll get him in the summer. Um, I just sort of no, no, never sort of kind of hang for Rangers with, with me. Um, I mean, obviously the contract thing. We turned it down. Is he turned it down? Is it that confirmed he's turned that contract? I don't down think or? we actually ever really find out if these things are true or not. Um, because obviously they played at the weekend and he was out with with an illness and that kind of sparked up the rumours again. Thinking right, he's he's going to come. We obviously got the. The contract offers being declined and stuff for like that, but um, Naismith really blunt didn't really put much on it to be honest. And if he's in the squad, I think Hearts are playing the night. If he's playing the night, um, aye, I, I, it could still be a thing where discussions might be taking place. But I think if we're spending this fee on on Diamandi, it, we're obviously in the financial fair play sector at the moment. I don't feel that we can go and then spend more money on 
Shyland. the same kind of fee for Shankland. I think, as, as you said there as well, I think this probably would have been the only window that we would have been going for Shankland um, uh, in the summer. I, I, I reckon if Roof goes, if Dessers goes, um, you've obviously got Danilo there. Do you bring in Shankland as well as m- maybe somebody else? I don't know. You could probably get him for a lot cheaper then. It still mm. kind of goes against the what the manager's trying to build, but I still feel that you do need a good deal of experience in your squad. And we we, we need more Scottish players as well. That's Absolutely. that's a fact. I was really, really surprised for us not to go and um, see any kind of rumours of signing Connor Barn for Aberdeen and on a pre-contract. I thought that one was set up absolutely perfectly in our favour mm. to, to go and grab him for Aberdeen. Again, it might still happen in the summer. It might be a case they don't want to announce anything until obviously the summer, but I think that'd be a huge opportunity kind of missed. And I, just for this window, personally, me and you were kind of looking at players in our own league and we've not really been linked to anybody, which is surprising uh, for me. I still think there's a, a really good back quality in this this league with the players that you've seen. Obviously, Miofsky, Duke, uh, Leighton Clarkson, even at Aberdeen, you go to Hibs and Ellie Yuan's obviously playing really well. Um, and you've seen Owen Beck, obviously, at Dundee. He's been recalled by Liverpool and stuff. And I I was kind of surprised how we've not really been linked with too many for the Scottish League. I get that we, as Rangers fans, want quality and stuff, but uh, we, we really need to look at the kind of the Scottish kind of nature in our squad because there's really nothing, none of it left, really. No, I'm fully, I fully agree with you, obviously. Um, there's, there's a lot of good Scottish quality players, obviously, that are, are all going to be pushing as well for, for the summer as well. I want to make that team. I want to be going to Germany. So it's surprising that we aren't looking at, at players. Um, I just, as I say, I just don't, if, it, if we don't sign Shankland now, I don't think we'll, we'll go for him in the summer. I just think it, it just makes, as I say, all the sense. We need we need a forward. We need somebody that's going to also guarantee his goals and, and make sure that we do win the league title. And I just think, sh- sh- if we sign Shankland, you're, you're, I'm not going to say you're guaranteed the league, but nah, there's a chance. It's, it's you know going to give you a better, better, better opportunity to actually go and... I just think as well, as well, you've talked about as well, the fee you're paying for this, boy, I, I didn't, I thought, right, maybe I, I hang with, but to see it's actually like four odds, so I'm, I'm like, right, cool, that's a that's a massive fee for us to be paying in January. It's weird to say that, do you know what I mean? Usually, as I say, free signings, loan signings are a bit heavy in January and then most of the big ones come in the summer, but I mean, it's, it's a massive fee, as I say, for us to pay for a, for a young player, so... We'll see how it goes, obviously, for him. Um, and hopefully it goes positively well. Um, as I say, I'm staying my way for the YouTube highlights. I'm not getting my hopes up. I'm not doing that again. Um, so, hi. <laughs> well, well, we'll see how it goes. <clears throat> yeah, well, I've just got the the notification on Twitter that the press conference has started for, for the game towards Hibs. Philippe Camont said he doesn't speak about any rumours. If you speak on one, you, you need to speak on 50. So, um, aye, it's pretty clear that Rangers still are keeping their car, cards pretty close to their that's chest with, with everything that's kind of going on. And to kind of touch on Diamandé as we finish up, I think this is one of those signings that maybe just came up and we thought we can't turn it down because it's such right. a good kind of... If you if you don't get him now, then he's going to go as you say to to the bigger clubs in Europe and top five leagues and stuff. So the fact that we'll be able to pick this guy up, obviously, it's, it's a, a hefty kind of investment. But I'm all with making that investment if we can get really good quality young players like this and really build them up and, and make them stars for the future. So on board with Everton. Hopefully, we get the victory and the game goes ahead tomorrow. And then, obviously, we will have a, a podcast next week covering the end of the window aye, aye, aye. and um, who who leaves and who goes, uh, who comes just, in in between. Then, just just before obviously we go, I think we need to bring that Greg Stewart uh, enthusiasm back, Jack. Um, <laughs> my man is is back, so I think we'll be talking about more about Mister Greg Stewart again. Um, I am I'm delighted to see that talking about quality players. It's a man that should have won the, the Ballon de Dore. Um, yeah. So I'm happy to see him back. But as you say, three points, hopefully game goes ahead. And then obviously we see this boy with a shot, all confirmed. Um, so I, onwards and upwards. No, hopefully we make it a, a good week. And uh, my, as I say, we'll be back next week talking about the end of the window. Um, the two games, next obviously, year. if they both go ahead, Greg Stewart, obviously, back at Kilmarnock and stuff. So <laughs> um, until then, we'll see you.